Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here and welcome back to EVE Talk, your weekly look at the market in EVE Online. And well, EVE Online officially became a 20 years old. Uh, it was actually last week, but I make EVE Talk just before downtime. So is it officially before or after downtime? Not entirely sure, but right now this is the EVE Talk. We are officially in a game that has been running for 20 years, which is definitely pretty cool and unique and obviously there's a lot of celebrations and events that uh, were and are happening around these 20 years of EVE Online so you can definitely join those for me. Uh, this is actually my oldest character, the Lone Wolf himself is my oldest character, it's an old uh, nickname that I used in Counter-Strike actually and uh, he has been born on uh, the 12th of November 2009 so I have been playing EVE Online for 13 and a half years at this point. If you want to let me know in the comments uh, how old your oldest character is I would definitely love to know. But other than that, uh, I don't have that much when it comes into news. So let's uh, take a quick look at the new Eden store. I'm not sure if there's still anything going on here. We do have sales on the Blue Star Defender skins, it looks like. But other than that, in the services, we are not looking at any sales at the moment. So overall, the market should be recovered. And we'll uh, go and take a quick look right away to see what's happening with the pilot services. And that's coming in at one. 40. There we go. And uh, as always, we start with the Plex market that's actually uh, been pretty flat over the entire week. So it bumped up a little bit. You can see that we actually had big volumes with upwards prices. That's because we had a sale for Omega Time in the New Eden store uh, during this period. That has died down. And you can see it has basically been easily absorbed by the market. We're back where we started from uh, last week. And uh, let's take a quick look then at the actual prices. So 4.7 million just above that in GDA 4.4 when it comes to the player owned trade hubs. A little bit of competition starting to dip just below the 4.7 million. That's interesting. Definitely a little bit of pressure to be spotted here right at the tail end. These are all pretty damn recent orders. And then when it comes to the buyers, we are above 4.4 million. So still a pretty small spread between sellers and buyers. Then uh, we're still going for those 20 years, multiple pilot train certificates taking a little bit of a dip here on the average prices, you can see how the volumes are uh, really becoming uh, absolutely nothing. But you can also clearly tell that this is no longer a regular market that is being fed by a lot of supply. As all of a sudden the daily average start to bounce all over the uh, all over the place, and we're back at around the two billion mark on the chart, which is just above two billion for the sellers. And there's still a couple of buyers that are in here, but for maybe ten of them or so at 1.4 billion hoping to still snag a cheap multiple pilot trade certificate but as i've mentioned before that has basically moved straight into a service that you buy from ccp that you can no longer sell amongst players on the skill extractors front we should see something very similar to plex at least in the last couple of days because here you can see we have big volumes with the exact opposite effect downward pressure on the price and that is of course when the skill extractors are on sale on the eve online website which means that you can grab more of them or uh, you can grab them for a cheaper price than is normal that means increased supply and that means lower prices but for the last week clearly a sideways movement is what's uh, been happening still below the 500 million so we have uh, st we still got a ways to go to be back at the price level before the last sale but we are starting to dip just above that for the sellers 503 million there 465 for the buyers so again pretty narrow spread around the current place uh, i basically think that we are still in that hold um, and wait pattern uh, wait and hold pattern a little bit uh, when it comes to the market because of course this be announced the next expansion we still don't really know exactly what's going to come with the next expansion uh, which should be coming next month so uh, there's not that much time for announcements then perhaps some uh, some test server stuff so we'll see how it works out impact on these skill injectors that's always pretty interesting and that is nice actually i think a little bit of pressure still very very high volumes here for the large skill injectors over the last week but we're staying below the 950 million mark uh, sellers are just above that but buyers at 906 million they are trying trying to bring that price back down a little bit not really succeeding that much 
Uh, two weeks ago they were doing a little bit better, bringing the buy prices below the 900 million, but demand seems to be strong enough to still be able to command these 900 to 950 million, really a pretty high price on the one year uh, chart, pretty historical price as well, of course, almost a billion isk uh, for this large scale injector. It is very expensive. We can see that the market is also having trouble uh, continuing to go back uh, to go up. So breaking above that 950 is a tough sell uh, for uh, for the market as well. The impact on the uh, small scale injectors then still really doing its own little thing. You can see how at the tail end here we're starting to go up from the current price range, and that means we are up to within GDA 900. 192 but coming in at 194 almost and 195 coming into view pretty quickly with a 180 million which is 12 million spread that's pretty much the same here but while we have a little bit of pressure downwards pressure on the large scale injectors at the tail end in the last couple of days clearly we have some upwards pressure in the small scale injectors and then finally we have the daily alpha injector that is still staying within the 45 to fill a 50 million range below the 50 i think that's pretty important so this is two three weeks at this point that we have been able to cross um or to stay within that range after the CCP sale. Uh, how long will it last though? That's gonna be the interesting part here. 48 million for the sellers, 45 million for the buyers though. So that spread is definitely starting to shrink as well. You can see how those minimum prices are starting to edge up a little bit lower at the tail end here but i think that that upward pressure is basically unstoppable for the daily alpha injectors and then finally we've got the hyper cores that have done something completely different here as well actually pretty normal why would there be more demand and more volumes for the hypercores. Obviously, the week where EVE Online becomes 20 years is the week where a lot of raffles might take place. And that's probably the reason why we have a unique move here in the hypercores that is counter to everything else in the pilot services. So 20 years celebrations, obviously a part of the metric right here. Next up, let's move on to the minerals coming in at 7.30. And as always, we start with the smallest one, or price-wise at least, here is Tritanium. And that is not good news. I was really hoping that we would be able to maintain a sell price above the 4 ISK, but that's not the case. Just the opportunity to sell above 4 ISK seems to have brought in enough supply to crash the price right back down. And so you can see within GDA 4.4, 3.99 coming into view. After that, we go up to 408. So there is a little bit of chance that, that we can get back there by next week. But at the moment, and that is unfortunately the response, as we get to 420, we're talking 1.1 billion, 300 million, another 200, another 300. And even here at 411, it's 600 million units. And then another 300 million at the 410. It's just too much supply for the market at the moment. And so the pressure is on. There is demand though. So that is the good news. We're still coming in at 390 for the first buyer here as well although that gap opens up pretty quickly to a 380 uh, after that so it's a difficult market at the moment everyone spots we're above four isk so we want to sell uh, we want to take opportunity of that better price but it's just too much for the market to bear and we are going back down below four isk for the average tritanium price i don't think the other minerals will be doing all uh, anything all that different but well pyrite managing to go back above the 10 isk uh, for both sellers and buyers that definitely feels like it actually might be a little bit different although the spread is just absolutely tiny 1045 to 1030 is one of the smallest spreads i think we have seen uh, for pyrite so but there are buyers again in that uh, market 1030 uh, is, is pretty damn reasonable you're easily now selling your pyrite above 10 is but my fear is that we've got this for a couple of days now and that this will be spotted as another sell opportunity too much too many uh, units will be coming on the market and we are pretty likely to see this come back down just like what we've seen for tritanium a little bump that manages to last perhaps about a week and then the pressure is back on i'm suspecting we'll see something similar here for pirate i hope i'm wrong i hope we can go back up in price but unfortunately 
for now that seems to be the pattern especially as Mixon continues to go back down here we even have a couple we even have a couple of days with minimum prices below the 50 that is not good 50.5 uh, for the sellers 48.74 for the buyers that's definitely a bit of pressure here trying to bring that price of Mixon below the 50 is and I think unfortunately that they just might succeed because this is pretty bad news if you look at it from a, a, a full high six supply perspective this should even um decrease the amount of miners that are focusing on Mixalon, but they, then they're likely to focus a little bit on pyrite for instance bringing that price back down so at the moment for high sec miners it is very difficult as all your earnings are clearly under pressure uh, due to i would say oversupply and not by that much there is demand but uh, there's just too much coming in for prices to remain at the current uh, heights well if you want to call them that next up we've got low sec so here is uh, isogen very very steady uh, on the 600 just below that at the moment at 590 so sellers are on that 600 602 for the sellers 594 for the buyers really a tiny spread here and that's the difference once you get from uh, high sick to low sick and to null sick uh, the suppliers the miners are in control of the price they dictate what the market is going to pay for that for the high sick miners are just too many of them that's really not that easy to do um, and as a result buyers can actually try to bring that price back down for isogen no such opportunity at this point still 600 is basically and uh, it's here to stay so i think here we are looking at pretty steady demand same story here for noxium which is again very flat unusually flat i would even say for the last couple of weeks at 900 disc for the sellers 888 for the buyers so again a tiny tiny spread it just that's what the market says it's worth and it's actually that's what those low sec miners say these minerals are worth not showing any signs that there's demand that's completely cratering or anything like that but clearly demand is not growing at this point either there's not too much competition for these minerals and then if we move to Nelsic, we have the sidrine chart that did the bump last week that is sort of coming back down a little bit but we're stuck halfway so we're still very expensive at 2355 isk for the sellers 2000 disc for the buyers so they are trying to open up a bit of of, uh, of a spread here to put some pressure on those sellers to come back down but it's a very tough thing to do because if you look at mega sites that one is just continuing and its average price continuing to go up and its average price is above 3500 is 3600 for the sellers 3500 for buyers much smaller spread here definitely a bit more desperation in the buyer's market for mega site which means one year high prices extremely extremely expensive and if we finally take a look at morphite that is the different story but it is of course also a different mineral tied to take two rather than the take one economy and here we can clearly see that something broke the camels back as we went back to 40,000, and you can see those sell prices those max prices actually got above that i think here the nelsic miners basically made the same mistake they spotted them above 40k it's been a while for them and as a result too much came in and so all of that pressure is just showing through in the week after that 39 and below for the sellers and 38,000 for the buyers cheap pretty cheap more fight at the moment as well which is another sign that the general demand has clearly uh, been a little bit lower than uh, in the months prior especially the first few months of the year where we had a big Nelsic war which again does show that wartime is very profitable uh, for the PvE players in EVE Online as well. Next up we have the PI mark and that's coming in at 14 minutes and here i think we'll get a little bit of a breather then since I'm, I'm seeing no signs that demand is still staying very high unless uh, there is still an arms race going for capital ships or something like that i think we'll get a little bit of breather but we'll probably be stuck at the current very high levels for pi and that's what you can see here for instance in the broadcast notes 
um, these are stuck around the 2.5 million mark we are starting to move up and down a little bit here on the price uh, but overall we're just not going anywhere 2.5 million just below that for the sellers 2.4 million for the buyers showing that there is still that demand but it's not um, like continuously competing for more and more of these goods so uh, stuck at the highest range of the year obviously then we've got our construction blocks that well this is can be seen as a bit of a breakout definitely the highest five day moving average the blue line for these construction blocks but overall uh, i think that enough supply will come in to bring us back down a bit Twelve thousand two hundred for the sellers 11 800 for the buyers clearly another demand driven story here for these very high prices um but we're starting to stabilize here at the tail end as well still super expensive of course and then our one exception uh, still has to come in that's pretty damn unusual uh, over the course of about a month, we basically get a two-step up uh, in a completely different range from something that's super easy to make. Coolant's going from 10,000 ISK to 12,500, and then a few weeks later to 15,000 ISK on the average price. Super expensive, almost 16K for the sellers, above 15,000 for the buyers as well. Um, if you have coolants, definitely, I think uh, you'll be very, very happy with the current price, gaining 50% over the course of about a month is pretty damn crazy then we've got enriched uranium that is basically peaking out probably potentially at the highest point of the year here as well 18,200 for the sellers 17,000 for the buyers very very expensive uh, again i'll give you guys this warning if there's one thing that i think ccp is looking at i've been saying this for many months at this point and i've definitely been wrong as i've been selling mostly here in the december uh, spikes uh, so i've definitely been selling too early but i do think that ccp is looking at this and that they won't be all that happy with this rather passive playstyle in EVE Online being uh, PI materials uh, to become this much of a value and in my opinion potentially a bottleneck in the EVE Online economy. Something might just happen. I also don't think that they want to nerf right around the 20 years of EVE Online but perhaps as part of the expansion a bit of rebalancing is possible as well. This is pure speculation on my part. I could be completely wrong but that is something that I would keep in the back of my mind and so I'm still still anything that I make from PI I just bring right to the market and I sell because I think that these are uniquely good prices. It's of course not as much as if I had kept my stuff that I've been selling in December and then I would have made a lot more risk. But that's the name of the game, of course. Integrity response drones then, right after uh, right early May, dipping down, down you could say at 3 million, still a very expensive price, of course. We are recovering, so 3 to 3.3 million is basically what these integrity response drones are going for. Buyers here a little bit desperate, 3.2 million to 3.3 million, tiny, tiny spread. Definitely very expensive as well. Mechanical parts then also moved into a new range now it hasn't gone to the 15k just yet at the moment but just last month it did so again 12,500 to 15k very expensive it's actually 14 to 13.5 just look at those spreads really really small showing that very strong demand still there in pi i thought it would die down a little bit looking at what was happening for the minerals but it really doesn't look like that's the case miniature electronics still going for almost 19,000 disc our nano factories here advanced pi materials first signs of a little bit of a struggle so that is interesting i do think that basically you can also see here a february spike um, that we have these types of materials that need a little bit of time to actually uh, have an effect on each other so advanced pi material basically requires a lot of the smaller materials in order to produce them here we see a bit of pressure clearly they've been very expensive for a long time that is probably finally showing through uh, a lot of these uh, uh, refined PI materials but now we are starting to see a bit of hesitation whoops was not a factory is where we were um, and I think we will start to get a pause in basically the entire PI segment uh, if this holds up so nano factories bit of pressure still 1.3 to 1.1 million very expensive tiny spreads Organic mortar applicators then just coming from a one year high at 1.5 million, a little bit okay at 1.4, 1 to 1.3. Not that many buyers from the looks of things, although in the Tranquility Trading Tower, more of them are showing up. So very expensive. 
uh, recursive computing module another one right where you can see perhaps we won't keep up with the current pace forever uh, do, going back down a little bit towards 2 million 2.2 to 2.1 million could also be that um, this is tied to uh, the um, the ship caster races uh, where I think at this point it's both the Caldari and the Galente that have finished their ship caster so well done uh, guys on that front and that may uh, bring demand down a little bit then we've got our robotics still stuck at 110k so super expensive here as well on a one year chart looks pretty good rocket fuel and uh, a little bit less consistent when it comes to the volumes but you can see here again that we are heading for a high point 16,000 for the sellers 15,000 to the buyers buyers able to get that average price so there's definitely enough supply to dump that back down but i think everyone would be happy on this one year chart to sell over here self-harmonizing power course dipping below the 2.5 million you can see a bit of exhaustion in the advanced pi materials market here 2.7 for the sellers below 2.5 for the buyers averaged at that 2.5 so there's definitely a bit of dumping that's happening here smart fab units uh, had this crazy spike again uh, we spotted that last week of course inconsistent volumes does mean that your average price struggles but that on an unexpected demand spike you can get those crazy returns of course where in a matter of probably 10 to f about two weeks you can go from uh, a 65,000 to a 180,000 isk price range now of course that gets spotted volumes come in things die down a little bit but now smart fab units are going for 100,000 units which is of course still a 35% increase over the course of about a month that's not nothing Sterile conduits next, advanced PI materials, so again some signs of pressure, definitely seeing some lower price points for the last couple of months here. It's nothing all too drastic as we're staying around the 125, but buyers below at 1.2 million and they're starting to grab a little bit of the supply there. Supercomputers then still super expensive just below 150 basically flat for the last couple of months very expensive again you can see how I was early selling here in December um, so uh, that was my mistake but uh, again I'm not sure how long this can last synthetic oil uh, was also one that was dipping down below the 10,000 is but you can clearly see that the average daily averages are starting to trend back up and we are in fact at 12,000 for the sellers. Buyers here though, a little bit more careful. And then we've got our synthetic synapses, uh, five day moving average at the highest price point. Again, over the last week, 130K. Transcranial microcontrollers. This is probably also due to the event that's happening because tech tree ships are uh, pretty good, I think, in those. And uh, then implant sets can definitely help there as well. So we are talking super expensive, Implant related specialized PI materials, 116,000 for the sellers, above 100,000 for the buyers as well. Water cooled CPU, definitely pretty unusual as well. Something that has or had, you could say, inconsistent volumes, was only worth 5,000. Is doing another double step as well, below 10K to probably 12,000 here, I think. Yeah, just shy of 12,000 and is now settling on daily average prices of around 13,000 ISK. Uh, almost that for the sellers, 11400 for the buyers. Be a little bit careful, although clearly the buyers have completely capitulated here. You can see those minimum prices just shooting up over the last one and a half months. This is one, another one of those PI materials that has those less consistent volumes. And that could mean that a serious pullback without even a CCP intervention is absolutely possible. And then finally, we have our wetware mainframes that are healthfully staying above 2.5 million. So while there are some signs in advanced PI material that there's a bit of exhaustion for all the buying um, that has definitely yet to ripple through the rest of the uh, smaller PI materials. Those are still super expensive. Some of them making one year high points as well. Uh, but, but yeah, I, I would say be very careful uh, and I would definitely try to take advantage of these extremely high prices at the moment. I, I could be wrong on that. I've been wrong before, uh, but the expansion could be very interesting for PI, I think. Uh, if there's any rebalancing, non-ship rebalancing that CCP might plan, it would be here. Next, we've got advanced moon materials coming in at uh, 2420. Over here, we'll just have to see if st 
stability is uh, continuing. I personally think that's the case. Minerals, a little bit of pressure, nothing too crazy. PI, a bit of pressure for advanced, but overall very expensive. So pretty stable situation. Let's get started here. Crystalline carbonites immediately showing me that I am wrong. Shooting up to a 175 from 125. 50 is increase here is not nothing. Um, probably a 30% or so. Uh, tiny volumes though. So this higher price, not really liked by the market too much. But yeah, sellers 175, buyers 165. So definitely a substantial move all of a sudden in crystalline carbonites. For Kaldari, it's titanium carbide that was already heading up and is also doing uh, an extra high price jump. Uh, probably a one year high point, very close to the December spike on the advanced blue materials nerves, 175 to 170 basically in line with crystalline there then we've got minmetar which is for fernite carbide continuing to hover in the 110 to 125 probably so we're talking 115 to 113 tiny tiny spread right in the middle of the numbers that i gave and then we get tungsten carbide finally that is also doing a bit of surprise jump probably close to the highest price point if we disregard this weird uh, jump here uh, with a couple of anomalous data points I would say in mid-January talking 183 to 181 so again very small spreads but carbides jumping up practically across the board except for the Minmetar version very unexpected in my book very unusual definitely a bit of a sell opportunity especially if you're still sitting on pre-nerf pre-December uh, carbides here Metamaterials front next here is the Galente version photonic metamaterials staying well above average but within a range of what was gained 10 to 12,500 so 12,200 to 11,500 pretty normal price for Caldari it's non-linear metamaterials you know holding on to the gains a bit of pressure at the tail end so a bit too much too quickly uh, but definitely the most expensive one so far 16,000 to 15.4 so that's actually not unreasonably more expensive than the Galente version in my opinion then we've got plasmonic metamaterials uh, Minmetar again struggling a little bit to maintain the gains although in the last couple of days we're back up to 12k for the sellers buyers 11,350 definitely following suit a little bit and then for a mar that was already pretty expensive is able to stay above 15,000 discs so that's all right as well 16,000 in fact for the sellers and the buyers so the meta materials have made their gains definitely better than right after the nerf for a couple of them so another in my opinion sell opportunity if you still invested like me for meta materials uh, before the december nerf down here so a little bit of upper pressure in these uh, first uh, few. Let's take a look at the other advanced move materials. Uh, if that upper pressure is translated here as well. Fermi on the condensates, very flat and in fact a little bit of pressure at the tail end here. So this one is going for 45,000 is basically zero spread. Then we got Ferrogel plateauing at 30k. Pretty impressive chart in the last half year or so uh, where you can definitely have potentially made about 100% in profit from the very low point. Then we've got Fullerites flat at 700 disc. That's basically the gains right after the nerf in December and we've been stuck there for a while. And then we've got our hypersynaptic synapses that is doing another you could say in my opinion at least a bit of a surprise jump back above the 6000 disc after seeing a bit of pressure but that was the december nerve going back above 6k then here looked like capitulation but the market says nope we are going right back up nano transistors did a spike um about 10 days ago here up to 4k so definitely seeing that potential upwards volatility a little bit it's not enough in my opinion to trade or to expect a lot of volatility in the tech 2 ship market but it is there so there might be something slumbering here uh we'll see of course again what ccp decides to do they have played with the idea before of adding pi materials to the results of advanced uh, of, of moon mining so uh, perhaps rebalancings there could still uh, catch us off guard phenolic composites are 1400 well 1365 to 1354 really a very very small spread again with some upward pressure our pressurized oxidizer is staying above 10k um, but not at the best price and our reinforced carbon fibers are dipping below 12.5 so here we clearly have a bit of a mixed picture some of them going up some of them going down 
and uh, and staying flat so overall um very much a market that is you know doing its own thing all over the place look here at ceramic fibers just coming back down from a spike up to 500 disc which is a pretty significant sell opportunity 415 still for the seller still pretty damn expensive so advanced move materials it's all about keeping an eye on it and if you have made your investments before the nerf uh, you can uh, before the nerf for moon mining that increase prices you can definitely look for those sell opportunities but it is not a, uh, a uniform move and there's definitely in my opinion not a lot of volatility to expect crazy stuff in take two ships which is the next segment of course coming in at 30 10. And let's take a look at these here. So we start off with the basilisk that went up to probably a 160, 170, something like that here. And again, sellers spot the opportunity, bring ships back in and we're back below 150 million. For the sellers, 132 for the buyers. Not that many buyers here in the market. In fact, um, if we touch those minimum prices, if they touch 130, you've got another potential jumping point. That clearly seems to be the pattern here. Then we get the Cerberus, same story, did a bit of a jump to 180, spotted supply coming in and buyers are already back below 150, back below 140, 162 to 137. That is almost actually, here is your sell opportunity, here is your buy opportunity, you could have bought here as well. That is almost a tradable move down here. So buying below 140 and I'm looking to sell at 180, that's definitely uh, potentially what can happen here. Pretty interesting. I did not expect that to be in our slow and steady uh, gainer of Cerberus. That was just really steady here. Bit of a jump up, bit of a jump up going down above the 150. Nothing all too special. But here at the tail end, that's pretty interesting. Then we have the curse next that is starting to meander uh, at that new high range. So it looks like if you can buy below 180, that might be your new jumping point. And we might just be there now. Yeah, 168 to 160. So it's actually 170, uh, below 170 for the buy orders. That might be our new jumping point for trading the damnation. Bad news for this chart, of course. You can clearly see how the volatility seems to be trending down on this one. Then we've got the damnation. That one was 400 million here, here, here. Command ships, to my surprise, the larger ships have been the best to trade in. The smallest ships like the stealth bombers have been the worst to trade in. We are coming back down from that, but clearly the market is again signaling that potentially jumping points are at three, below 300 million for the buyers in the damnation we're not there yet but look at that pressure 338 to 328 and you just need to get rid of three buyers and you are below the 300 million you get your opportunity to jump back in and the damnation here has shown that 400 million sell opportunity has been possible three times already in the last four or five months so that's pretty nice but can we keep that momentum I'm really not sure. The Deacon, as I mentioned, smaller ships not doing that great. One sell opportunity here, pretty pronounced uh, at 30 million for Deacon. But other than that, we've been stuck above 20 million. It's basically, a, in my opinion, not a great chart to be looking for trades. Uh, the Eagle, a little bit better, definitely doing a jump here. 150, even 180 on a single day. Coming back down from that pretty quickly. So I'd probably look at buying below 130. We're just there. So perhaps the jumping point for the Eagle is materializing right now. EOS command ship. If you're looking for more volatility, again, this is pretty damn good. Another one, two, three sell opportunities at 400 million. We're coming back down and I would look for, can I jump in below 300 million? Yeah, absolutely. 258 now for the first buyers. That's pretty nice. There's definitely is to be made on a chart like this. Then we get the Aries starting to come back up. And again, we're starting to spot those patterns, in my opinion. Buyers dipping below the 40 million. That's a little bit too low for the market, probably for the producers as well. So we're starting to dry up. And at the moment, so if you bought below 40, you're selling at 55 million. That is not a bad trade. Then we get the flycatcher, unfortunately smaller ship, again more on the slow and steady uh, coming back down. I'd, I'm not sure though 
uh, we are touching the 40 million. I would consider that a potential jumping point for the flycatcher. I'd love to lose the first four and be able to buy below 40, but this is pretty reasonable. You can again see that we are touching that for the first time and we're starting to unfortunately go back up in the daily averages already. So in all likeliness, your buy opportunity is already over. But if this can then show a little bit of volatility after this, perhaps some trading is possible. Uh, the Guardian was better, is coming back down. Uh, touched 130 here on a day, but for now we are talking 148 to 137 million. Perhaps uh, below 140 uh, is what we can be looking for for, uh, for the Guardian, but I'm not sure yet, right? This is definitely a nice double top. And uh, here we, in my opinion, still have to look for what the new bottom price will be, what the new jumping point will be. The heretic, one big bump and then very flat. So interdictors had this one very nice sell opportunity. But other than that, completely lacking in volatility. <laughs> still bombers. This is actually uh, almost depressing, staying below 20 million and just barely going anywhere. You can't really trade in that. Iki Tursa buyers back below 500 million so that's pretty interesting as well 523 to below 490 even now for the buyers and you can clearly see that there is a decently steady spread and that selling well above 500 million is possible uh, obviously we do keep an eye on the triglavian trade but 500 million for a single trade is definitely a lot for a lot of players i understand that uh, then we get the ishtar yeah moving a little bit all over the place um Potentially, I think if we're below 160 for the buyers, we could consider that we are below 160 for the buyers. So this is really the name of the game. And I do think if you look at these charts that the market is signaling that we are finding those new uh, potential bottom prices, at least those cheap uh, prices where you can jump in for a trade. Uh, Kirin, small ship, so yeah, one sell opportunity and then now slow and steady back below the 20, not much to say. Manticore, uh, while that one is up a little bit, again, very, very steady at the current price range, can't really trade in that. Nemesis, same story there again. This is really a surprise because from my historical perspective, stealth bombers have always been great ships to trade actively, uh, way better than some of the bigger ships. But then we come to another command ship and look at the surprise interest, sell opportunity right now in the Nighthawk, 500 million. It's actually 490 for the sellers. Look at those buyers, 459 for the first one, 400 million for the next one as well gonna be interesting to see how this one will respond to the new supply how low we can go again but again bad, um, command ships uh, incredible actually for for trading if you had the patience you got a great sell opportunity right now for the for the night talk you can probably you know those that have bought at the exact right time and have been following for a long time can probably make a 200 million trade uh, profit uh, on this sell opportunity here Next, we've got the Oneros dipping back below 130. So I would say, yes, if you want to trade this one, 121 for the buyers, you can try to buy one. Again, volumes are pretty low, so it's difficult to make the trade happen. But with a single one, it's definitely possible. And that looks like, again, here, here, and here, and here, th that 130 million does seem to be the new price where you want to jump in. Purifier, one spike and then flat above 20, so that's another no. The Rook, a little bit disappointing, 150 to 200, it's practically tradable, but uh, it's definitely having trouble showing enough volatility, in my opinion. Uh, the Sabre, Interdictor, so one sell opportunity at 60, we're back at the 40, and we are uh, seemingly uh, lacking in any volatility. The Scalpel actually getting back to buy orders below 10 million, below 9 million even at this point for the Scalpel. Might look like a great opportunity, but again, small frigates, they're not doing that great. The Scimitar is coming back down substantially here again below 130 for the buyers. Yep, 115, 122, couple of sellers becoming quite desperate, very low volumes. This is the right side of the chart. This is definitely again the time to consider jumping in for the Scimitar. And the chart is again showing here, here, here and here that this is a pretty nice potential jump of po uh, jump in point with uh, selling back well above 150 being a possibility. Obviously, you never know exactly where things are going from here, but if we can see enough action um, with the expansion, that seems to me like it's, it's a good option. 
Slip near command ship, not as good as some of the others, but another sell opportunity right now coming in at 340 million. It's low price seems to be around the 250 which is the same as before the nerf so i'd be very careful on this one uh, if you if you take if you can take profits i would try to do so right now um, and then i would be patient and wait to see how the market actually develops it might be that uh, this one will go for like 275 or something like that uh, as the new jumping point being a little bit less popular and we saw that as well in the advanced move materials then the uh, ships, uh, command ships for the other uh, factions. Then finally, here is the Vagabond. Um, still pretty expensive in my opinion. Not that great in volatility. Did um, start that volatility just on the announcements. Obviously, 130 to 180 in a, a couple of days. Uh, but we're struggling to get back to a really low range. So I'm not sure if you can buy below 150, sell close to 180, it's all right. But that might already be off the books looking at the chart here. And then finally, we get the Zarmast also seeing pressure. Unfortunately, minimum price is still above 400 million. So that's still a little bit too much. Not a short trade just yet. Uh, definitely want to look at the other option, the Kitursa there rather than this one at the moment. So for Tech 2 ship, definitely pretty interesting and the unusual pattern here that i personally did not expect is that it's the command ships the the most almost most expensive uh take two ships we still have battleships of course and potentially capital ships coming that honestly guys that is something to think about as well right these might look like nice sell opportunities but if we get take two capital ships that could be huge uh, for, for people that are still holding the two ships. That could also be very big if you have jumping points right now, of course. Something to consider. Uh, but uh, overall, you can do a little bit of trading in Tech 2. Unfortunately, uh, the smaller ships really anemic. So you get a focus on cruisers, uh, command ships, uh, Tech 2 uh, logistics cruisers. Stuff like that is doing a lot better for active trading. And then we get our Tick 3 ships, 4130. There we go. As always, we start with the destroyers and the confessor spike. I mean, it's been somewhat absorbed. We went up to 80 million and we are coming back down. We're back at a 60. We're actually still at 69 million for the sellers, but below 60 million for the buyers. So huge spread, small volumes. Definitely a difficult uh, market, in my opinion, to get a good feel for. I think it's just sometimes it's nausic meta sometimes it's event meta but other than that other than unique niche uses this uh these uh, tactical destroyers are not all that popular so it's all on well actually these are reasonable volumes so the hecate going back up substantially 77 million to 63 million perhaps something knows i don't uh, that uh, that buffs might be coming for these ships. That's what I would honestly expect as it's still pretty damn expensive compared to some tech 2 options The jackdaw going back up here as well 63 million to 60 million very small spread here as well And then finally we get this vehicle that was up is able to hold on to whoa 73 million for the sellers 64 million for the buyers not great in the volumes, but Definitely a jump in price across the board for these tactical destroyers. Um, and it feels to me like it's like a late jump. This is no longer tied to the war. So I'm not really sure exactly what's happening here. We'll keep an eye on it. I wouldn't be uh, placing bets honestly in the tactical destroyer market. But perhaps people are doing so knowing uh, that perhaps some rebalancings or stuff like that is happening. I'm not sure. The cruiser market uh, for the Legion, that is not that promising in my opinion because you can clearly see that those minimum prices again have that one and a half months of steadily slowly going back up. So here the spread uh, is becoming smaller and smaller making it harder and harder to trade. 203 to 190, uh, pretty high volumes. I think again event driven but the price is just not going anywhere so not that great unfortunately for us traders. Loki is a little bit better, uh, going up above 210 million. So you had a sell opportunity. We're still at 209 for the sellers, 195 for the buyers. And not that long ago, right here below the 190, seemed to have been the new jumping point for the Loki. So that's pretty good. That's trading. You can trade on that as well. You could have done that here as well. So I like the Loki. The Legion becoming more and more stable though. Proteus 
bit of a jump, nothing all too special, although maybe we could have bought well below 190 and we're selling at 210. Yeah, there's definitely a bit of a trade in that as well. And then uh, we might have seen that on the ticker as well, of course. This has to be event driven, right? I mean, it is a, an awesome PVE ship here. So the Tango, look at those volumes, bringing the price from well below 200 million to 230 million. Very nice, very pronounced sell opportunity. And you even had a nice jumping point here on the minimum prices just before the event. So the Tengu doing a nice trade. The Loki, not as good, but definitely a bit of a trade in there. So I would still be looking at Tech 3 Cruisers rather than uh, Tech 3 uh, Destroyers for actively trading uh, the Tech 3 market at the moment. Um, and I think you're basically too late. If your gamble is, so this is going to come in and help these tactical destroyers. I think the price is already baked in at this point. You'll probably be too late for that. And then for the extra product for the week, uh, I'm just a little bit interesting, uh, interested considering what the command ships have been doing and that faction warfare changes have been in the game for quite a bit now. I want to take a look at the faction battlecruisers 4525. So here we go, we get ships, we've got battle cruisers, not the battleships, and then we get our faction battle cruisers that only have navy versions, and we get old version uh, old ones like the Brutix Navy issue. Look at how stable and cheap that has become. Uh, so compared to the command ships that are going now for like 400 million ISK, we get a 138 million for a Brutix Navy issue. Very ample supply, very stable as well. Cyclone fleet issue, well, difficult chart because it's such a new ship, but we're talking 144 to 133 million um, so that's like a little bit more expensive but a 140 ish range so far drake navy issue 148 to 135 a little bit more expensive a little bit more expensive but really those volumes i think are now uh, being made up very quickly with all that uh, faction warfare action ferrox navy issue that's the new one 140 to 127 Harbor, Harbinger 148 to 136, a little bit more expensive again, but not able to really make highs as it could before all of the faction warfare uh, changes. Hurricane fleet issue, that's a lack of supply, 161, although all, clearly more popular, wow, uh, a Minmatar ship. That's doing way better than all the others. <laughs> I haven't seen that in Tech 2 in a while. But here is the Hurricane Fleet issue selling for 161 million. Not a great availability. Clearly, there's demand for that. Myrmidon Fleet issue, one of the new ones, 141.28. So, right in the normal price. And finally, Prophecy uh, Navy issue, 140 to 130 million as well. And pretty new, but also pretty damn stable. So, it is pretty obvious, in my opinion, which is. A bit of a loss, uh, but I think I noted that the potential uh, consequences of uh, faction warfare, giving out more rewards, uh, making it easier for player to access, is that we'll just get a lot of supply, far steadier supply, and that means a pretty relatively cheap and steady market. We do have our one exception, which is for a Minmatar ship. That's pretty unusual. But the Hurricane Fleet issue, of course, looks amazing and is pretty damn amazing. Uh, but overall, these Navy faction battlecruisers have really, in my opinion, despite the fact that they also use a lot of the uh, like the gas stuff, that if I'm not mistaken, um, the, uh, the Tech 3 destroyers use as well, this has become quite cheap and affordable uh, compared to, for instance, the Take-Two ships at this one. I think CCP is pretty happy with that because they are uh, considered to be Take-1 uh, ships. Um, so these are quite affordable. Let's take a quick look, for instance, at uh, this is the Brudix. And if you go for the Galente, regular Brudix, that one is costing 55 million. You get a triple the price uh, on that one for the, for the faction version. But I think this is overall still pretty damn reasonable, especially looking at this full one year chart rather than 300 million for a faction ship around 140. Uh, that's definitely a lot better. So I think here this is exactly the, the play that CCP had in mind. More faction warfare activity, more rewards for that, make the ships more, uh, more available. Uh, and this might actually be part of the reason why the tactical destroyers then um, are going up in price so much. 
uh, because this is also eating in uh, what they need for industry that's probably becoming more expensive in the faction ships this is made up for by perhaps cheaper loyalty points cheaper minerals and things like that but for the tactical destroyers there's nothing to make up for that and so again i, I think that the uh, price value proposition for these tactical destroyers is just getting worse and worse because of what's happening in the faction ship market it's pretty damn interesting we will of course again have to wait and see what this be announces for the expansion uh, but if there's rebalancings there's uh, uh, rebalancings there i think it could be very interesting for the market as well and that is going to make it for this if talk guys thank you very much for watching and as always i'll see you next time